Yes, sir. Good to go. We can start now. Okay. You're live. Yep. All rightly. So, uh, everyone, good evening. Who joined now? Maybe this is a uh, YouTube video, so maybe you are watching it somewhere in the morning, somewhere in the evening. Yeah. So maybe good morning, good evening. Um, basically, my name is Harshdeep Sharma. I'm network and security professional. So here in this domain from last 12 years, delivering the trainings from last five years, it's been more than five years now. And uh, so many hours I have delivered with within the corporate as well. Um, we are going to start a new course, which is CISSP certification and uh, the new batch, I mean. So what is that and who can join, right? So I'll talk about everything, why uh, CISSP certification is good and uh, what we, we gonna cover in all, right? So if there would be any audio or video issue, please do let me know in the chat. I think. Well, so maybe who joined, definitely they have searched a little bit about CISSP and who may be watching the Simply video on YouTube. Let me tell you, this is for security professionals and at least five years of experience is required. And uh, if you are new in the IT domain or security domain and you don't have five years of experience, then you can maybe skip the video or maybe just for information, you can watch it. Yeah. So certification uh, required five years of experience. Uh, that is the, their primary requirement. Uh, about that, what we have in CISSP. So basically, it's a information security cert or you can say information system security cert, right? Information system is what? Basically, if I break these two parts, information like data. So from the data, we are uh, we are gaining the information, which, which can be helpful for my company to make some decisions, right? Data is, you can say like uh, almost everything we are collecting. From the data, we are going to process a lot of faces, we call data life cycle. And we are gaining the information in that, which is further companies are using to make some uh, decisions, right? Now, uh, this information system is what all, all, all that system, all that maybe software, hardware, machine, policy, right? Uh, Sometimes uh, regulations required, government, uh, government license required, regulations required. So all the thing which is helping me to, uh, which is giving me the information like when I can collect the data, what data I can collect, how long I can keep, when I need to delete, right? When uh, 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 basically if I'm deleting, then how I should delete. So all these things, all these information, when it's going to any software, hardware or any process, that we need to understand. So security professional or, or for the CISP holders, basically, we gonna cover almost everything because if I say information system, system or, or the information will go in everywhere, right? In your company, you are using any hardware, it will go there. You are using any software, it will go there. You are using the network, it will go there. So almost everywhere, every corner of the IT, it goes. And we need to understand little bit, not very deep, little bit about everything. So CISSP is more about, you have one inch depth, right? Uh, what they're saying is one inch, inch depth, but one mile long. So CISSP is like that. You know, in, you no need to go very deep in, in particular any of the topic because we're gonna touch so many topics, right? James, uh, you can uh, turn off your camera uh, if you want. So uh, one mile away, basically, there are so many topics we're gonna cover, right? So technically, if I say 
you no need to know the configuration. We don't we don't do the configuration. For example, my uh, my data will go in the network side, right? Maybe router switches or firewall load balancer. So many devices will come. All that will come in what information system. But we no need to understand like how to configure the router, how to configure the other boxes, right? If we talk about like software development. Again, we no need to understand like how we are developing. I mean, how we are developing, we should have an idea basically uh, every phase, how we are gonna test, is that going in my require, meeting my requirement, meeting all the uh, policies, right? Is this secure? Everything I, I may need to uh, understand. But again, I no need to uh, develop any of the application, right? Uh, let me do one thing, just a second. OK. Well, uh, I was telling you, we have eight domains here in CISSP. If I go here, we have eight domains, security and risk management, asset security, and security architect, whatever uh, eight names are mentioned. You should have five years of experience in one of them, right? So you should have an idea like what is risk management, what is asset management, so something like that. And if I if I open um, this this thing, I'll talk about that later. Basically, what uh, how long the exam would be, right? So this is secondary thing. We will talk about that later. So let me tell you, every domain has a weightage, which is not same but very nearby, right? Between maybe ten to fifteen uh percentage of each domain you have approx and uh weightage in the sense how many questions would be there from any particular domain right so from security risk management there would be 15 percent of questions right and uh, along that uh, you have other domains mentioned here if i open each domain as i told you you have so many topics to cover but again you should have an idea about everything because CISSP, for, for example, like security officer. Now security officer is taking care about the overall security posture of your company. And when I say overall, then definitely they have to take care about every, every single phase stage of your data, every single state of your uh, information system, I mean, uh, machines, right? So you have so many, you can uh, pause or you can uh, basically read what we have, but let me give you an overview because there are so many things. If we're gonna cover like one by one, then it will take uh, a long. So I'll give you a story, uh, how we gonna understand the, the perspective, basically that is the organization perspective, right? So we are an organization and uh, uh, basically, we have our data because every company, right? Every company require data. So because data is the only one where they, they set up everything because if they are in implementing some application, right? That is maybe for creating the data or maybe for retrieving the data, right? So applications are there, then, then servers are there who, who will run these application and then you need networks so that, uh, it can uh, communicate between your servers, right? And uh, so storage, you, you need multiple copies. So everything, then, then you need security, for example, firewall and all, right? And then you need power also, power backup also. Then you need skilled engineer also for almost everything. For, uh, for application, we need different one. Different teams would be there for uh, servers mainframe or kind of different teams would be there and network different teams would be there from a security officer uh, basically perspective uh, uh, one second from a security officer perspective we need to understand every team their process what they're doing how they're doing and is that secure for the company is there any risk Right now, risk. If we say no, sometimes we understand like okay, risk. Maybe what kind of risk is there? So, for example, if you buy a computer, no, buy any 
uh, what CISSP is, is giving you the information. For example, you buy any laptop, right, for the company. How we are deciding, like, which model we should buy? Usually, if a non uh, security officer or any other like startup, they are buying these type of machines, whatever is required for my business, for example, a laptop. What we gonna what we gonna understand? Maybe the spec specifications, what specifications require for my model, and that's all we are uh, trying to figure out. But CISSP is telling you when you are going to select a model. Is that fulfilling your requirement? Now, requirement is not just specification. How this system is going to process your information? Because there would be something like he's uh, taking the data in, then sending the data out, and this is a hardware, right? And is there any possibility someone can hack it? Any possibility someone can uh, steal my information? Right or any possibility when I use this for my uh, future, uh, you can say integration. This system will stuck somewhere or crash somewhere in between. Right before I buy a bunch of PCs, I first have to test it. First, I have to test it. I may have to give them almost possible scenarios how it gonna work. Right, how it gonna process. So you might have under uh, heard the TPM chip. Right, uh, hardware encryption decryption. So, in some processes, for example, you are buying uh, uh, some uh, system for a banking environment, then TPM chip, chip is required. It's mandatory. And if we are not buying, then we are not compliance. We are not fulfilling the requirement. Requirement of maybe government, maybe standards, right? So many other things. So, what we are buying, we have to first make sure that is fit for my environment my requirement and then how are we going to test definitely there are some models earlier there was like uh, it sec model uh, tc sec model tc sec i think we called it then they both was combined and nowadays we are using a cc we call uh, i think uh, common something we we call it now we are using the cc model Right, so CC model or something, there are maybe other models. Basically, they are going to test your machine, and there are so many websites as well or tools as well who have the tested machine. For example, a banking environment. Now, you, you want to buy a laptop, there are sites who are giving you the information what has been tested and how many tests has been done. Right, what type of test has been done? It's not like one or two tests, they maybe give like hundreds of test they are going to uh, perform on the, on a particular hardware. They are going to check every state is secure. Now, state is what? State is what? For, for example, currently I'm using this uh, laptop, right? It, it has a state right now. It has a state. The moment I will maybe uh, add a new device, for example, pen drive, state will be changed, right? I open any software, state will be changed right so these states of every position in your system when you open something close something right so when you start your machine so every state should be secure state that uh, that kind of testing they are going to perform right and other thing is uh, one second Mm -mm. I think I need to clean like that. Okay. So basically, what I'm saying, CISSP is giving you deep information or about where your data or where your information will go. Entire that system. Now, if I talk about system, as I told you, just an example of this laptop, because it's going to handle the data. So every state of the machine also I need to perform. So this kind of knowledge it's going to perform, uh, provide you, right? Then data life cycle, which is very important because how you are going to collect the data, 
there may be different teams to do the work, but um, from the CISSP perspective, you should have the information about everything. For example, data, if I say, you have your data center, you are going to collect the information. There are two, two ways, basically, you are going to collect the information or you are going to create the information, right? Data, I would say. You're going to collect in the sense, maybe you, you are going to, uh, sorry, not collect, we call it capture. Maybe you have your traffic internet, uh, this one network traffic, right? Internet traffic, you are going to capture your, your devices creating logs, right? So all this would, would be, you are going to capture the data. And definitely this data will be saved somewhere in your uh, database and then create like maybe manually, someone is uh, opening the file or giving some information, saving the file, right? So this is like, you know, then you, after creating or capturing the data, then how you are going to keep the security, right? Because maybe all type of files are not same. Maybe some of the files I need more security. Some of the files I need less security. Then we call it classification. Classification, maybe you have heard basically, you are going to keep them in different classes or different groups, right? So because you have basically class zero, one, two, and three. So you have basically uh, very sensitive information, very confidential information, right? Then what kind of what kind of controls you need? To be honest, does not matter how much experience we have, but whenever it's 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 come on the like we are we are enabling a security for the organization by heart by mind we cannot do we need some documents right if if i do it like without document then there there may be a lot of chances i will miss a lot of things so i would need some documents what kind of security i need what kind of data i need to keep in my uh, class 3 we call it like confidential, sensitive, private information, different names, government side or non-government side it could be. But yeah, what kind of security we need? So they are going to, uh, this information is going to provide it by your standards. Standards you are going to choose according to your industry, which industry you are. Some of these standards are mandatory. Some of these standards are optionally. Now standards are what? Standards are basically a kind of uh, like documents which is giving you mandatory or uh, guidelines like non-mandatory information for your particular industry for example bank right for example any other um, manufacturing unit so pci dss you might have heard whenever you are using this google pay phone pay right so somewhere or any other application like which is related to uh, i think uh, this credit card debit card so uh, this term you, you might have seen somewhere on your screen, PCI DSS, it's, it's a standard. It's a standard, basically it's a mandatory standard for the company who is going to collect customer's data related to their credit card, debit card information, right? So government is uh, making it mandatory, basically uh, how they are collecting the data, what data they can store and how long they can store, right? and uh, minimum basically. So similarly, uh, there is another mandatory you might have heard HIPAA, right? HIPAA is for basically the, the organ hospital, so basically who are going to collect the health related information, right? Physical or mental uh, health related information they are going to uh, collect. So, so many other things. Your CISSP is telling you when you are going to collect the information or the data, right? Data or information, nothing, nothing big deal. But but what I say is data is like raw information is filtered, right? So when I call data, you can say, you can assume it like I'm talking about data or information is something similarly, right? So basically, and then it's going to pass your system. In your system, what machines, what process could be there? Your softwares. So you need security here. Definitely we need security here, right? Uh, when we are developing any application or maybe we are buying any application. So same thing which I was telling you, like when you buy the hardware, 
same thing when you buy the software as well you need to make sure it's not going to leak your information i remember one of my client they bought some uh, network related software basically uh, they need to figure uh, sanitize the information right they need to sanitize the information basic uh, what i mean to so say it when they need to give the information to their field engineer right and uh, like what uh, ip or the password or the uh, uh, the radius or the taca server information we are using or maybe some other information which i don't want to share with my field engineer right so they are giving they are manually removing these uh, information and uh, basically then then send, sending the final file outside of your network we call sanitized information and uh, then they bought this software or the tool basically who is going to do all this automatically like automat right so uh, basically manual will definitely will take time and more human error chances and uh, when we bought this tool basically one file he was sending out whenever wherever you you are sending basically to the field engineer this is a sanitized information one file he was sending to their on on server which was a full configuration full configuration right even though they was not misusing it but still when you buy a software you have to make sure you have to clear, carefully you have to check the term and conditions right and then when they they checked like what, what is going on uh, their security team when they tested like two files for the similar device is going out one has a less size one has a more size what is the difference when figured out this this issue we we found basically uh, something not good uh, when the information is going out so they checked with the vendor they checked their policies it was mentioned there like when we are collecting the information we are not going to lose any of the original information so this clause uh, was there or something similar was there basically they were saving the original uh, information so that tomorrow in future uh, we may ask them they they can give us the original information but still it's against our policies we should not send our original configuration outside of our organization and this software company is outside of my organization right so these small things we 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 need to uh, uh, make sure information is not going to misuse or uh, uh, wherever it goes it should be our uh, uh, under our control rightly just an example and there are so many uh, similar things right uh, when you when you have uh, uh, the overall infrastructure now cissp is, is also giving you the information about roles and responsibility right roles like who is going to handle so basically let me tell you, you know there are three um, uh, levels of management one we call is top level management so top level management basically uh, your ceo right your cfo uh, and all the big, uh, big profiles and uh, uh, md board of directors right so so many other uh, profiles in the top management what they are responsible for they are responsible for creating the policies policies are like the vision of the company how we want to see our work culture our security posture right our organization goal oh, how we gonna attain that and uh, basically policies is like statement of the company or the this top level management how we are going to uh, secure what security we need uh, where we need security so all these things then uh, you have a mid level management mid level management your senior managers right so all the uh, these uh, persons will come and they are basically responsible for implement implement these policies policies has been created now we need to implement in the implement we have to make some plans we have to make some standards right procedure and uh, in these they are going to tell you the baseline baseline is like minimum uh, protection then uh, a lot of other things basically 
implementation and here the mid level management also have some power to make some changes maybe vendor selection software or the solution selection right and uh, above after that they can uh, take approval whatever they have decided they can take approval like this is what we are deciding what we have figured out in the market or according to our requirement and uh, this is the overall uh, plan so then top level management can uh, uh, approve or reject or maybe require some changes or whatever uh, next further actions required and then you have is uh, low level management where uh, supervisor the, the team managers will come they are basically taking care of the controls the policies you have mentioned uh, you have implemented first you created then you implemented now third the low level management is taking care on the ground side everyone in the team or in the company they actually taking care they actually following the rules right and and uh, uh, users are facing if users are facing some issue then uh, we may need some change but they cannot make any change low level management they cannot make any change but yeah they can suggest they can suggest to the mid level management this is on the ground side we are facing or we may maybe need uh, another solution right so whatever uh, requirement is there and then mid-level management can see maybe uh, if we we uh, in uh, basically involve any other new technology then what is the risk right so so many uh, processes will be there uh, then your your teams would be there right so for every team there would be a manager you can say uh, they are reporting to their lob and further uh, process but yeah the the security perspective if i'm telling you you are using these kind of uh, uh, top mid level low level management and uh, what we are going to learn in detail uh, in top level what role would be there what responsible they are for right so whenever whenever for example security officer i was talking about right now uh, do we need any new solution or control to implement do we need uh, some changes in the existing environment if we are making some changes or adding something new then uh, they are responsible for um, you can say make some education plan for example trainings right to to not only the employees but yeah for the management as well right and they they, they usually uh, talk with a lot of teams almost every team maybe uh, lead or managers of their team to understand uh, how is the process right and um, uh, what issues could be there uh, so many other things and uh, what you say asset security now asset is what basically anything even though employees they are asset like human resources and uh, the hardware their assets physical uh, assets right movable assets and uh, information is also one of the big asset as i see from the cissp perspective no maybe any other security cert as well when we are talking about priority like you have uh, sometimes there are there are the questions no like um, for example if you have a situation where a human's life is also uh, uh, in danger and uh, how you gonna make decision on behalf of that situation right so they are using something i think uh, open close fail close should be there so fail securely uh, 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 should be here somewhere I think uh, this one, but yeah, let me tell you what is that. I think this one, right? So what is that like fail open? Uh, usually we call that fail open and uh, fail secure. Two states of your um, kind of machines or devices or processes. For example, you have a firewall right you have a firewall and in case of any failure maybe any process of the failure uh, in the uh, what do you call 
any control any configuration or the firewall is faulty right so how it should be the the default state how it should be so we call it like fail, fail, fail secure fail secure in, in the sense it will close everything it will close the traffic no traffic will go in and out so we call it like fail close or fail secure system so basically if my any control over or related to the firewall if fail then it should not pass any traffic and but if i say fail open for example uh people life in danger maybe uh what you you are using nowadays no these electronic doors in the company right and if your power is out right or maybe fire in the building maybe fire in the building because of that couple of sensors are there power is disconnected now in that situation in that situation how the doors should be we call fail open for example if the this is going to be like power going to be fail then it should be open at least your emergency door at least your all the doors right so depend on the company to company what they are giving but yes they are giving a way like so that people can save their life so from the the cassb perspective wherever the person safety is always on priority any question you see maybe in the interview maybe in the exam wherever is the person safety always on priority then you then you have information security right and then you have information as uh, uh, what is that sorry hmm. person security and information security and reputation security right reputation security there are maybe a couple of other things but yeah uh, this is the some of the top most uh, security perspective they are looking for uh, someone raised the hand. Uh, one second. Yeah, Bhagav. You can unmute. Bhagav Mishra, uh, you can unmute. I, I just sent you one request if you want. If you have some question, uh, you can unmute. Otherwise, maybe. I can lower your hand, yeah? Okay, thank you. Hmm. So what I was saying that every, uh, you can say, in the, in the assets, right? So person safety is on priority, then the information security. Then, uh, cryptography we're gonna understand then couple of models are there right a uh, couple of models are there and some of the act are there most of the maybe you joining or watching the video from different uh, countries but CISSP is containing the act more about uh, Europe or the US uh, related to their syllabus right uh, then 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 what this mean cryptography crypto analytic, analytics right so some type of type of attacks if even though we have our encrypted information that or that one what type of uh attack could be there we call crypto analytic basically that person who is going to break the information right in encrypt in from encrypted information they they, they are trying to decode this right and uh, what you have network security right so again you have uh, uh, the same thing you have the data you have the data in your database we call data at rest data at rest now how you gonna save it how many copies you gonna save it this data who can access not only who can access how can access as well for example if i tell like user a uh, is is uh, basically authorized to access this data but it should be it should be accessed from a process 
for example maybe one network or any particular uh, application or the software right so it should not be like accessible from anywhere so then there are a couple of models who is going to give you this information like um, how you can control these uh, access right to whom and how they can access we call data at rest you need security then you need encryption as well right who can access as well then how it will go out from your um, uh, from your database one thing you understand we call transition basically for example this is the database one request will come data will go out it's a transition right then maybe network network you can assume like switches you can assume um, uh, routers or anything it will receive it will forward transition then you talk about application application will receive it will transmit or maybe request again transition right so these transitions we want policies on like policies or the security or the control when they are going to receive the data when they are going to raise the request these we call points input points usually we call that here it's more you can say centric point where we are considering the security almost for everything right not only for hardware for software as well and uh, interfaces right interfaces you have so many right user interface you have application programmable interface you have physical interface hmm? so you have so many interface where you want to make some controls right then data at rest i was talking about when your data is saved somewhere what kind of security we need now this data will be called out by some uh, maybe yes you can unmute who uh, ramesh uh i think if you have some question or no, someone is raising the request uh ramesh uh now i can see um one thing you have is you can unmute uh you have the power you can unmute automatically uh, uh if you have some question you may come over the mic or you can just put in the chat yeah both the options are good so when you're raising a request uh, hand i may just call out your name or uh yeah one link is shared in the chat related to any query related to admission batch timing you can uh, check with my team right and if you have some technical question related to cassp or the stuff we are talking about then uh, you can ask me here rightly uh, moving ahead basically then this data will travel over the network now this network could be internal as well could be internet or the external network as well wherever this data goes it's your responsibility to deliver it securely right then here who can access this data we call confidentiality cia you every any security stuff you take cia is very common cia you definitely you have heard if you are from the security uh, background so here we have cia and a as well uh, what is that and basically non repudiation and authenticity cia is like confidentiality basically who can access this data only authorized should 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 be able to access we call confidentiality right then integrity when someone is calling this data from any of the computer maybe within your network outside of your network now now this data will be delivered from your from your uh, database on their computer right now maybe again over the internet is going inside your network it's going it's your responsibility to give a secure channel we call integrity so that no one should be able to make some changes no one should be able to uh, uh, capture the traffic or watch what we are sending or receiving right and then availability now availability is sometimes we think like okay maybe data should be available right so when it comes to comes to availability not only the data from this 
PC, uh, specifically if they are part of your network, right? Then in the network, servers, cables, other configurations, right? Uh, routers, maybe other uh, whatever the, the setup you have. Everything is part of your availability. Every that thing which is helping my user to reach my data or helping my data to reach there. So every single maybe software, hardware or process uh, involved in that uh, operation, we need availability, right? Then uh, we call availability and non repetition is when two computers are talking to each other, right? They have sent something. Now they cannot deny. They cannot deny like I did not send it because along their message, whatever is sending, along their, their message, a lot of uh, signature or uh, digital signature, we call that, right? A lot of other proof of origin, the, these all things will go where this user cannot deny like I did not send this message. So then authenticity is like we have to authenticate or basically uh, authentication, you can say, we need to verify. We need to verify who is receiving, who, who, who is receiving, or they may be using some uh, password, multi-factor authentication, right? So whatever the process they are using for authenticate, right? So then uh, what do you have after the CINA? Your data is traveling over the network, right? You need security. We call data in transit or data in travel, you can say. Here also still okay, we can implement a lot of things we have. And after that, when your data going to be in use, because maybe you can give the encryption here and when data is saved somewhere, you can give the encryption here when it's traveling over the internet or network. But when user is reading this data, then we have to decrypt it, right? Encrypted, they will not be able to read. So we have to decrypt and then we have to give it. So here, again, a lot of things which would be part of integrity only. So who is that user? What they can do? What they can do with the data and every activity we need to monitor, right? Wherever they are not authorized to make some changes or do some actions, Immediately, there should be a detection system. Immediately, there should be a prevention system, right? And whenever we are talking about the security controls as well, no? So CHSP says there, there are two type of controls. One is detective control and one is uh, preventive control. And third is there, which is uh, not a third type of, but yeah, we call it corrective control because in your detective, in your a preventive control, you might find something require changes. You want to correct it. We call corrective control, right? So detective control is like they can detect, but they cannot stop it. For example, CCTV. If someone is stealing maybe my car, but CCTV can uh, can just detect it, right? But CCTV cannot stop them. If I say security guard, it, it might be a preventive. They can stop it, right? So uh, detective and um, preventive solutions you have, controls you have, I would say. And yeah, uh, these are the data states, data at rest, data in transit, and data in use. Right? Uh, last maybe 10 minutes I'll keep for uh, questions, but let me just quickly go through my slide again. And then uh, access identity and access management I just spoke about. Again, you have a couple of uh, models here you can uh, you can use in your company. Uh, I will discuss in the uh, in the training what kind of models we have, what kind of act we have, what kind of standards we have. Right in detail, we're gonna talk about. So in detail, in the sense that you no need to go very deep. If I say any act, right? Any act, you no need to go very deep. But yeah, uh, if act is like what? Act is, for example, if there is any ISP, 
what kind of information they can collect they reject if my company is giving me the computer and my son is playing a game on it it's a crime then what comes in its computer abuse act is there right so then some uh, as i told you like some uh, us based act are there so federal government or the us government uh, act are there which uh, would be there for example who ever is the maybe company who is going to uh, process the data for uh, any to, 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 to government related information how they going to secure it right so they they falls under that act and uh, then school uh, university school or these colleges they they falls under some education uh, act is there right children act is there and uh, so many other other uh, act would be there which uh, we will discuss and uh, after that maybe we are talking about information maybe information system security is related to it system but when we are talking about security assessment then not only uh, it related but because of other uh, because of other uh, stuff like disaster right then uh, my it system can be stopped so we need to understand that as well we call uh, business continuity and disaster recovery basically all my essential services especially when when we are talking about like on priority right priority is what when you when the organization is giving any service outside for my customers right that should be my own priority and that should be that should be working or the available in almost any situation even though my whole building is collapsed but still i should have my service running how basically i may have backup sites right if my site is not working then these these sites will be available we call hot hot site cold site nowadays you have very good good solution is that this cloud sites right and uh, then uh, cissp is giving you another beautiful thing uh, maybe you never heard or maybe you you have seen in the movies right when there is very very critical information we are going to delete then not only just deleting it in some situations we may have to you can say destroy the the hard drive or the system where these information was processed for example it's very very critical information and the system who is involved to process that is also very very critical uh, asset for my uh, for my process and if i need to delete the data maybe delete uh, data retain uh, policy is completed and i can delete it so it's time to delete then i have to uh, destroy these system or the hardware as well right and uh, sometime maybe the system is the information or these kind of system is there and i i think like okay when time would be i will destroy it yeah but maybe before time before the time come my site got some like flood or this disaster uh, what i was talking about and then there are some sensors like fire sensors we call right so there there are water sensors sometime like that well also and you have your expert system expert system where the machine learning artificial intelligence these all uh, will be involved right so you are giving the information then system has some decision making power so system itself can make a decision so we are giving the information to my system when water level comes at this level you destroy self destroy we we call it sometime something basically the system will automatically destroy himself including the information including the hardware or everything right so these type of uh, solutions are also there so that uh, later there would not be any possibility someone is uh, accessing my data right and uh, then security operation and yeah uh, another thing about here when we are going to uh, you can say there is a update i'm using some software almost everyone right we 
we are receiving the updates from the um, so many mobile application or the Microsoft Windows, right? Let, like there are updates. 70%, 70% updates are related to security because today we are using some uh, codes behind the software. There would be maybe any vulnerability, right? Or every day hackers are finding new possible way how they can compromise my system. So these applications who, who are providing the, the security at their level, they are releasing new updates so that my their application can be secure, right? Now companies, whenever we are using, uh, maybe you, you might have seen a lot of time uh, if you notice or you can notice uh, very next day, the software versions, for example, Google Chrome, right? You are using in your home and you are using in your uh, company. There would be definitely a difference. Difference is like the, the company one would be little old. Why? Because every time update, they, they no need. Why no need? Because maybe sometime it's not related to my requirement. Maybe updates in the in the update, they, they clearly mentioning what is the new change. Maybe my company no need according to that, right? Or maybe uh, it has some uh, issues. The new update, which which I would if I would update, then there could be some issues in in my overall infrastructure or some process or any tool, right? And then uh, you might have heard this very recent news, right? Google Chrome itself. If I'm giving you the example of Google Chrome, this is not like when we are creating the application, then only uh, it can be vulnerable. When we are giving these update, we maybe try to fix some existing issue, but because of these updates, there could be some new issues as well. And this happened with the Google Chrome recently, maybe a couple of months back, right? So update this end, and there was a vulnerability like uh, hackers can uh, access their, their data via this tool because Chrome is kind of an application where it has the internet access as well where it has my file system access as well. So they was using this kind of opportunity and uh, they stole uh, some of the data as well, right? So uh, that's why we not always just updating it wherever update is available. First, we are making sure, is that making some sense for my requirement? If yes, then I will test it. We call it a sandbox. Sandbox is like a a simulation uh, simulator what you say uh, environment right so it's an environment according to your uh, network maybe in your network you have 500 machines here you may have like 50 machines right but it's similar whatever the hardware software configuration whatever you are using on your actual network you are uh, using here as well so because you want to test like if you if you want to um, uh, update your system what new states would be what new risk would be you want to test it if there would be any risk still your data your actual network is safe right we call sandbox so then software uh, development software development is basically you are going to use some models because software development have some stages right and uh, first of all they will make some plans like right? what uh what is our agenda what is our goal and uh, how we gonna meet them they're gonna make some plans they're gonna write some codes then they're gonna combine or so many other things now every stage during the development or you can say like every mile uh, they are reaching we have to test and uh testing is not like only the fail proof uh yep yeah, yes but uh if any error is coming now, for example, I'm using the Zoom application because of X, X, Y, Z issue, uh, Zoom uh, will, will go crash. If it is going crash or maybe giving some error, then what information it will give me in the error? That also should be a secure information so that there should not be any clue for my hackers. Not my hackers, but yeah, no, no, it should not be for uh, any clue for the hackers, right? So, uh, the the main thing is your users. Users should be aware. Maybe you are building a uh, very great boundary of your uh, organization, but uh, users are not educated from the security perspective. 
and uh, this is our responsibility to provide them training right maybe in the meetings in the emails uh, show them video whatever possible uh, 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 medium you can use but yeah uh, they should be aware about their uh, security policies so that simply if some emails are coming they should not click on they should not connect the pen drive right they should not carry any other personal device in in the network so many other things uh, so here uh, in detail all these eight domains you can maybe uh, pause or read or you can go to the isc square website who is providing you this um, cassp cert right so you can go there and you can check what all we're going to cover basically we're going to cover every single topic they have mentioned in their cbk cbk or you can say all their uh, eight domains right so here uh, please come up with some questions technical questions related to admission batch timing these all you can uh, ask my team they have shared one link in the chat uh, you can click on that link if there is any admission related query yes please i couldn't see the link this is sarish uh link uh, maybe you joined later uh Gaurav, sir can you please share it again uh sorry which link uh, Hirsch? uh that uh, admission query link no you, okay you send I, i'll it. send it in the in the chat box one minute Okay, uh, he shared it. So and even it guys, I'm sharing a, a enrollment link also where you can see and for the initial, uh, because this is our first batch and uh, yes, we want to uh, deliver this batch. So there are some offers also, you can contact a uh, team, they can help you with the pricing and all, with the best offer. I'm, I'm sharing a one more link, uh, one minute. So, yeah, so you can, you can expect at least around uh, a uh, fifty percent discount, whatever the price on the website. Okay. All rightly. Uh, thank you very much for joining today, and we'll see you in the course. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, still, uh, for next couple of minutes, I'm here. If there would be any question, you can either come on the mic or put in the chat. So I will be more than happy to answer you. Um, otherwise, definitely in detail, we're going to discuss all the topics. Yeah, I'm waiting for you.